Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. We are continuing with the commands of God as well as Jesus. And in this message, I'm focusing on some remaining commands in the New Testament given to us by Jesus Christ himself. We are to take what we learn, saints as well as sinners, and apply these commands to our modern day life. If you want to inherit the kingdom of God, if you want to grow spiritually, if you want to bring peace to a situation or situations that you're going through, then you are going to listen to what Jesus says. Okay. We're not talking about what I say. We're talking about what Jesus says. And one of the first things that I mentioned in the last message, and I will continue, is make the name of Yahweh known to fulfill the will of Christ in his prayer to the Father. And that's John 17, 6. Okay? We are making the name of our Father God known. Okay? We don't sit in discussions uh, and just act as if we don't know Jesus, we don't know God. When the opportunity is there and God moves on our spirit, out should come Yahweh, out should come God, out should come Almighty Father, right? Out should come whatever God has moved on your spirit to speak. Because there is a will, a will that he wants to accomplish and you might be a part of fulfilling that will. And speaking the things of God is <laughs> part of it okay Matthew twenty two thirty nine. 39 love your neighbor this is a command of Jesus I know that sometimes we don't like our neighbors yes I know this I know sometimes they do things that bother us but if I don't have the love in my heart for them then Lord Jesus can you please provide me with the love you see I pray those kind of prayers because it is hard to love somebody who is disrespectful, who's arrogant, who's mean spirited, who says some racist things or did some nasty things. OK, or you heard something through the grapevine. Lord, when I see this person, oh, may they see the love in my eyes. <laughs> right. May they see that I'm a decent person. I'm a righteous person. I'm a, I'm not trying to cause any problems in the neighborhood. Right. Love your neighbor. Matthew twenty two thirty nine. Next, await my return. Do not listen to imposters in the wilderness or private places saying it is me. My return will be universally seen. Okay. Simply put, and you can refer to Matthew 24, 4 through 6, as well as Matthew um, 24, verses 23 and 27. Await my return. That's what the Lord says. So we're not supposed to be believing every little thing that shows up in media or um, believing what somebody said they had a dream or some kind of vision about. OK, we will universally see when Jesus shows up. But there's going to be imposters. You know this. There's a long history. If you do some research of all the so-called Jesus sightings and all the people who said Jesus was coming and sold everything and then ended up killing themselves. Come on. The end of the world is coming. Lord, be with our, our saints as well as sinners who believe that you're already here. Oh, Lord Jesus. See, we need to be in our word, saints. We really need to be in our word. God has not shown up for all of us to see as of yet. And there is no date. We don't know the date. We don't know the hour. Now, produce spiritual prophets. This is a command. And God's abundant blessings will flow. If I produce spiritual prophets, right? We're talking about P-R-O-F-I-T-S, <laughs> God's abundant blessings will flow. Otherwise, what you have in blessings will be taken away. God blessed you with singing. God blessed you with writing. God blessed you with listening. God blessed you with service. God blessed you with all of those talents, gifts, whatever it is that you have and you're not using them. Oh, well, he takes those blessings and gives them to somebody else. No, 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 Lord. Wait a minute. Hold up. Hold up. Don't get. Oh, no, you haven't been using them. See Matthew 25 and 29 and also see Matthew 13 and 12. Try to understand my message and more understanding will be given. If you don't, what little understanding you have will be taken away. You can see that in Matthew 13, 12. Be alive again, born again like the prodigal who repented from sin and headed back to the father. John 3, 7, Luke 15, 11 through 32. 
Okay. Be alive again, born again. That's what we're supposed to do. I don't know where these people uh, come off saying this stuff about, oh, no, you don't need to be born again. Uh Uh-uh. That's antichrist types of uh, talk. Okay. Like the prodigal who repented from sin and headed back to the father. You are to be born again. Saints, you know you fell away, sinner. Be shrewd with money, using it to gain friends, to lead them to the kingdom. Luke 16, 1 through 16. If you love me, keep my commandments. John 14, 15. Watch and pray. Matthew 26, 41. Feed my sheep. John 21, 15, 16. Baptize my disciples. Matthew 28, 19. Once again, these are commands from Jesus himself. Teach the nations, including the Gentiles, all that I've commanded. That's what we're doing today. Matthew 28, 19. Receive God's power. Luke 24, 49. Make disciples of all nations, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. Matthew 28, 20. That's what believers are doing. When you show up in the church, they're supposed to be making disciples of you. Okay. They're supposed to be teaching you. They're supposed to be observing the uh, commandments. And then, of course, love one another as I've loved you. So you must love one another. John 13, 34. You love me even though I lied, even though I creeped, even though I cheated, even though I was deceitful, even though I said some negative things to you on your channel or elsewhere. You love me. God put that love in me because you know that if it wasn't for God. No, I wouldn't love you. (laughs) Come on. But God, he puts that love in us. He gives us a love for people where we take up time with them. I could be doing something else, but I say, wait a minute. Hold up. When's the last time we checked Jesus's commandments? When's the last time we checked God's commandments? I need to share this with the people. Need to remind them. Need to remind myself. I don't want anybody going to hell. I want them to inherit the kingdom of God. They know they're supposed to be doing some things that are righteous and true and honest. I care about them spiritually because I know there's people around them that don't care about them spiritually. Could care less about God. Could could care less about their spiritual condition. Jesus. There are some people right now who are working. And I see one particular relative in the spirit who are working. As they like to say, mind in their own business. Can I tell you that mind in your own business can also send you on that straight path to hell? Because you see, when you should have opened up your mouth and spoke the things of the Lord, when you were traveling, when you were walking, when you were riding, when you were talking to people and so forth, and you chose not to, that could be blood on your hands. And for those of you all who have done this sort of thing, you let people... Get by you without speaking one command, without just encouraging them, without rebuking, teaching, correcting, any of that. You need to repent. Matthew 4, 17, you need to repent. That's a command of Jesus. And as I said in the previous audio, Jesus wants us to follow him. We're not supposed to be following other gods. All these people coming up with these different names. We are supposed to follow Jesus. He commanded that we follow him. I haven't seen anything bad happen in terms spiritually, in terms of me following Jesus. Now, physically and so forth. Yeah, there's been some things because, well, (laughs) they hated Jesus and they're going to hate us too. And besides, we know the disciples, they suffered much behind following after Jesus. But I'm talking about spiritually. I'm rich. I'm blessed. Okay. My father owns a cattle on a thousand hills. You see. So I know I'm good there. And I want some people to know that they know too. You see. We rejoice when we're persecuted for following Jesus. We rejoice. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You don't like me because I'm speaking truth. That's all right. Hallelujah. They think I'm sitting up there getting all mad and upset. Been out of shape, please. Oh, you call me this name and that name. Hmm, All right. I must be doing something right. (laughs) Hallelujah. Oh, you want to call me out on this, that, and the other and give me long paragraphs, pulling out all sorts of scripture as to why you don't like what I said. That's because you feel convicted, sinner. You feel convicted. You know you're supposed to do A, B, and C, what I told you in that audio. Stop wasting your time sending me long paragraphs. I don't even read them. 
I don't even read them, pulling out all these scriptures and stuff. I don't even read them. Okay, because I know God for myself, you see, and I want some of you all to know God for yourself that it don't matter what they say to you. It doesn't matter that this message was convicting or it wasn't convicting because if you know God for yourself, you can be able to preach the kind of uh, teachings that will uh, shine a light on the lies, expose them for what they really are. And sometimes people just like to lie to themselves. That's why they avoid those cutting messages and cutting teachers too. God gave us his word and so we are to teach it and while we're teaching it i know sometimes it's tempting to be angry with the brother or the sister that's not receiving it but we don't do that we be angry at the sin we hate the sin we hate the personalities that are dark and evil that are connected to the sin and yes i'm going to be passionate and angry about that So I hope that some of you all are just encouraged this day. Encouraged knowing that the commands of Jesus are very much alive. They are there to help us in this world of sin, right? We got people who coveting after married women, married men. And God don't want us to do any of it. You hear me? We got folks who try to tempt us into being in all sorts of relationships and connections that are downright evil. So I hope that you can see the commands are a blessing like I can see and not a curse because they're, they're just here to help us saints. They're not here for us to argue and debate and cross reference a thousand times to see if the, <laughs> if the commandment is going to change. It is what it is. I know that some of y'all don't like to give, but y'all need to give, okay? You don't have to let everybody know you gave. You just give. You see, God puts, on, puts in your spirit to give. People take up time. They invest in you. They give you some good messages. They're trying to help you mentally, physically, and spiritually. You need to sow some seed. You need to give to that teacher, that preacher, that leader, the business owner, okay? And stop worrying about, well, what are they going to do with the money? What they're going to do with the money is pay some bills. I tell you, that's what I do. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What they do with the money is bless other people. I give, I give uh, to uh, the uh, church and what they're doing. I support them on the different events that go on. And some of these churches, they got a whole lot going on and everything costs money. You see, you help in the community. I'm giving. You um, doing all sorts of things to uh, build up your family so that your family don't fall apart behind some bills. I'm giving. I mean, come on now. We got to stop being so, what is it? <laughs> Frugal, fickle, uh, critical even. So thank you as always for just taking time out. This completes the very short series on the uh, commands of Jesus. If you did not take up time going back to Exodus 20, um, in the last message for those Ten Commandments, uh, please do take up that time to do just that. Because even though some of them, uh, they don't really fit, you know, our lifestyle. But at the same time, though, you take what you can get from those commandments, right? Um, just to give you an example before we close out this message, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, right? Your Sabbath day might be a Monday. It might be a Tuesday, a Friday, okay? Saturday typically is a Sabbath day, right? But we know people work. You don't get all caught up in legalism and end up making it convenient for or inconvenient for your coworkers. If you're scheduled to work on Saturday, you work, okay? And then your Sabbath might be that Monday when you got a day off. So then... You use that time to pray. You use that time to read your word. Matter of fact, I'll tell you what you can do on a, on a Sabbath day, on a day off, right? Matter of fact, it's one hour. One hour you can carve out of that day where you praise. You praise and worship the one true God, okay? You say, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. I worship you right now. I praise your holy name like those people you see in the church with their hands lifted up. 
and you begin all your prayer with praise, thanking him for your eyes, your nose, your mouth, a place to stay, right? Um, running water, lights, okay, gas, all of that. And then you get into your prayer requests. You ask the Lord for forgiveness of sin, okay? Taking up that time. And you can find out about forgiveness of sin in Matthew 6, 14 and 15. You want to confess that sin, whatever that was that you did. That was unrighteous. And even if you don't remember what it is, I confess my unconfessed sin, Lord. The kind of sin that has been hindering my prayers. I'm asking right now that you rid me of that sin in Jesus mighty name. You see, you want to be transparent with the Lord. During that Sabbath, you can also be petitioning the Lord. Okay. The Lord says you don't have because you don't ask. So I'm asking the Lord. Okay, for whatever my personal needs are. Then, of course, there's the intercession that takes place. And that's praying for the lost. It's praying for, you know, people who have all sorts of issues, things that they told you about. And you didn't pray on the street for, for uh, you know, you to be seen. But instead, you said, I'm going to pray for you. And you pray quietly. And so during this Sabbath, you pray for those things. Okay, that people are going through. As well as yourself. You read God's word. You read his word. And you can check that out. 2 Timothy 3, 6. That gives you some motivation. Open up his word and read it. You can also read Psalm 19, 9. Right? You need to be enlightened spiritually. So although you have your prayer time. Okay? You also have a time though for study. And that's where you're reading over the scriptures. And you can have your uh, devotional. That helps out too. It has the scriptures um, extracted based on whatever the needs are. There's the meditation that takes place. You're not just reading, but I'm sitting back and I'm thinking about what I just read. Okay. You're pondering on the word of God. That's how you become wise too. That's how you can take a scripture and be able to see it in a way that other people don't see it. Uh, Thanksgiving, we're thanking the Lord, okay? And that, of course, is included in your prayer. And then you can find some scriptures. I usually go into the book of Psalm when I need it um, to pray the word, when I just can't think of what to pray. And then singing. And if you don't feel that you're a good singer or what have you, then you can hum, okay? Or put some praise music on. Let the singer sing for you. And you're doing that on your Sabbath. And you're listening. You shut everything down. I need a moment to listen. No, I don't want children coming to me. I don't want a spouse coming to me. I want to listen. I'm not answering the phone. I'm not on this internet. I'm listening. Is there something that God wants to talk to me about? And then, of course, I'm ending my time with more praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for another time with you. For another time with you. You see? So that's how your Sabbath can really be fulfilling uh, spiritually for you, okay? And, of course, the benefits are that uh, you will feel uh, better mentally as well as physically when you go through all of that. That was 12 points I gave you, okay? So God is a good God, isn't he? I love him. I love him because he's always showing us something. He's teaching us. He's leading us. He's guiding us. And he's healing us. Some of you all, you feel healed. You feel healed mentally, physically, and spiritually because you lean on the Lord. You say, Lord, I need you right now. I need healing for my mind, for my body, for my spirit. I need to have positive thinking in my mindset, not negative thinking. I want to be that beacon of light for others. I want people to grow. I want people not to be feeling like they're cursed, but feeling like they're blessed. You see, oh, come on now. Jesus, he wants us to be like him. He's not intimidated like man, right? He's not jealous. He's not looking us up and down and rolling eyes and asking questions like man does and woman does. Who do you think you are teaching and preaching and leading? 
Who do you think you are sitting up there, got the nerve to praise the Lord when just the other day you said this and that? Oh, but the Lord has forgiven me of my sins. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're forgiven. But you don't know what I did. I did some dirty, dirty stuff, Nicole. You're forgiven because you went to the Lord and you asked him for forgiveness. And if you haven't, then I suggest you do so that you'll stop feeling so bad on the inside. I mean, you think God don't know what goes on? God is everywhere. He saw. He knew you were tempted. But God could have stopped me. He could have done a lot of things for all of us. Right? But he loves man so much. He loves woman so much that he gives them the opportunity to choose. He's not a dictator like some of our parents and grandparents and whoever else. He's not a dictator. He gives us the opportunity to choose right from wrong, good from evil. And that person who abused and used what have you, they had a choice just like you. And they chose to do wrong. But God in all his grace and his mercy, he can forgive us if we can forgive others. I forgive that fool that said this, that, and the other, somebody said. Okay, well, let's stop right there before we call people fools now. <laughs> right? We treat others like we want to be treated. You see, even Matthew five twenty two reminds us, don't insult others by calling them fools. Oh, but you know, okay, Lord, please forgive me. I did. I did call some people some fools in the past. I did. Please forgive me, Jesus, because I don't want to be called a fool. I don't want to be treated like one. You see, oh, God is a good God. And you could be reconciled with the one that you offended. I mean, that person, they're righteous, they're good, they're nice, they're truthful, what have you. You can be reconciled. But I tell you what, that one who is um, demonic, who's evil, you got to guard. You got to guard your heart from people like that. You see, you forgive them from a distance. And it's Shan Double Wolf, and gave somebody, you need to hear that. You forgive them from a distance. Because sometimes we can be so excited and so in love with the Lord that, you know, we, we say, oh, I love everybody. And we get out here, we start talking to people, right? I mean, there's been so many times where I say, oh, you know, I want to help this one. I want to help that one. And the Lord said, woo, slow down now. <laughs> slow down now. Not everybody is your friend. Anyway, walking this walk, we're denying ourselves and we're taking up our cross. We're following him. And I hope that. You realize that you don't you don't put yourself on the throne anymore walking this walk, saint, as well as sinner. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's not about the people coming around and calling you and worshiping you and loving on you and doing all things for you. You got to deny yourself. Well, you don't know what she said and did and what have you, you got to deny yourself. You take up your cross. You follow after Jesus. I'm following after Jesus. Well, that is it. Be renewed in mind, body, and spirit, knowing that God is with you every step of the way. His son, Jesus, died on a cross to save you. If you haven't said the salvation prayer, you ought to. Oftentimes, I tell people, I say, why don't you just go to the Google, okay, and Google salvation prayer. This will be one of those rare moments where I'm going to do that for somebody today. The salvation prayer, there's so many of them, but a simple one is uh, this particular one where it says, Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I acknowledge to you that I am a sinner and I'm sorry for my sins and the life that I've lived. I need your forgiveness. This is for someone right now. You know who you are. You've been listening to the audio messages for a long time. You've been liking, you've been subscribing, you've been leaving comments. But one thing you haven't done is say the salvation prayer. Some of you all, you said a long time ago. So it's time to refresh. Refresh your mind a bit. Reconcile to the one true God. Dear God in heaven, say it again. Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I acknowledge to you that I am a sinner and I am sorry for my sins 
and the life that I've lived. I need your forgiveness. I believe that your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, shed his precious blood on the cross at Calvary and died for my sins. And I'm now willing to turn from my sin. You said in your holy word, Romans 10, 9, that if we confess the Lord, our God and believe in our hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead, we shall be saved right now. I confess Jesus as the Lord of my soul with my heart. I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. This very moment, I accept Jesus Christ as my own personal savior. And according to his word right now, I am saved. Thank you, Jesus, for your unlimited grace, which has saved me from my sins. I thank you, Jesus, that your grace never leads to license, but rather it always leads to repentance. Therefore, Lord Jesus, transform my life so that I may bring glory and honor to you alone and not to myself. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me and giving me eternal life. Amen. That's the salvation prayer in a nutshell. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody is saved, sanctified, and the Holy Spirit filled this day. I suggest you get to a church. Praise the Lord around the like-minded. Walk down the aisle. Get baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God is good. Blessings to you. Please do check the description box for anything that might be of interest. You've been listening to YouTube NM Enterprise 7. Subscribe today. Also, if you haven't given, we do welcome donations. To God be the glory.